Hello. <laughs> I'm going to try it again, but right now I'm kind of trapped. Like, <laughs> um, this was such a bad idea. Was that the most ridiculous thing I did today? <laughs> yeah, actually it is. Um, is that the most ridiculous thing I've done this month? No. <laughs> I am ready. Hello, my name is Erin. Thanks for joining me today. Um, you are watching Diary of a Diva Boss. I keep forgetting to put that in all the episodes so far. I'll do better. Today, we are going to do something... I was going to say different. It's not going to be different. But it won't be as serious as last week's. And, uh, right... So this week I was thinking of doing some random reflections and I looked at talking about who you surround yourself with being one of the more important things when you're trying to get these big goals. And everybody says that, but nobody really talks about maybe their experiences or you don't get a chance to hear about it because um, you don't get a chance to hear about it because they just give you this warning that you probably didn't even ask for. And then they walk off because, you know, that's what people do. Anyway, what I would like to talk about, um, and this kind of goes with um, gratitude, things that I'm thankful for, and things that I learned growing up. Um, I don't think I'm that old. I really don't. I mean, all my students think I'm ancient. We are talking about expressing your gratitude and making sure that you know that the people that you're thankful that are yes I'm recording before we talk about gratitude <laughs> I'd like to talk about the fact that I have changed where I record today and I said I'm going to try it today because there's not a lot of noise interference in here you probably will hear some thunder um but I figured everybody would leave me alone because at about this time I typically am in bed watching TV and nobody wants to talk to me. That's not true. They're just, everybody's doing their own thing by this time because we will have worked all day and everybody's just chilling. My son will have done schoolwork or at least pretended to do schoolwork. Who knows? Anyway, I'm actually really upset at this game I was playing because I was on level like 179 and then I got a new phone and logged in and it was like, would you like to start at level four? No, I would not like to start at level four. I put a lot of work in that stupid little game. Backing up. Gratitude. <laughs> it is important to think about what you have done and what you, how you've progressed. Today, I set my goals for the month of May. And so far, my goal setting has always happened halfway through the month. Last month in April, if you remember that video, I set my goals for the month of April around April 17th. And um, that's about happening right now. This is We're halfway through May. I don't know what date is. <laughs> what have you achieved? That's what I'm grateful for. We are halfway through Icolori de l'Opera's virtual workshops that were online and mine is next so I've been planning for that but it's a 10-day break and I have time to plan my workshop and get all of those materials together and then there's one more about four days after mine and I that reminds me that I need to actually record the materials for the last workshop so I would do the piano stuff so I need to I need to get on that it's also an opera that I was going to ask if I could do some score study. Hmm. I should pick up the score and look at it, right? <laughs> the other thing I was going to talk about, and, and gratitude, I wasn't going to say that much about that because it's pretty self-explanatory. I did briefly mention being around the right people. I remember telling my teacher before all of the quarantines happened that I feel like for the first time, I knew all of the right people. Actually, I think I said this on a video, probably. <laughs> Diary of a Diva Boss, the first episode or first video, I'm pretty sure I said that I finally feel like I know the right people and that this is the right time. 
<laughs> it's funny because I don't know that it's the right time, but it doesn't feel like the wrong time. I have no idea how to, how to feel about, how to feel about what's happening right now. Anyway, halfway through that, we have a concert coming up. We, um, one of these brilliant baritones actually sent me a message and was like, did you think about doing a Juneteenth concert? I said, no, I did not think of that. That is not something that is in my head. Um... And I know everybody's going to, well, not everybody. I know there's going to be a group of black people that say, what a shame. And I'm just like, you know, Juneteenth was a day that, you know, the slaves were freed. I will check that information before this gets out there. But in Louisiana, where I'm from, we didn't really celebrate it because everybody else seemed to be free. And then Louisiana seemed to lag behind. It just, that's not the day that the slaves were released. <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> So that, and, and it wasn't something that my family observed because of the delay. And I know people are going to think, well, that's weird, but it's actually, it's part of history. You can look that up. Uh, the other thing that, um, that I did just to prove that Louisiana is backwards, um, and that's why the slaves were not freed at the right time. But the other thing was desegregation that went through the Supreme Courts <laughs> at least a decade before Louisiana actually observed that. My mother, who is, let's see, how old is she? I think she might have been born the year that case happened. So her senior year in high school was when her school in Louisiana desegregated. That's the first th that was when that happened. Now she was out in the country and I think um, my dad said for him it was in middle school that happened and he was in the city. But still, that's th that was way after. It was so far after. It, it just was not, I, I digress, that's not important. I just wanted to really, I wanted to think about some of the things that were um, were things that you could control. I know I talked about failure last week and sometimes the thing with failure is who you surround yourself with. There was a point in my life where I was surrounded by the wrong people because I felt like I was supposed to be around them. And I don't want to call them out because they, it's not they're not horrible people. They were just not the right people for me. There's places where you can go and you can flourish. And I know people were able to do that there. I just couldn't figure out why I couldn't. Just, it never worked. It seemed like I would have an idea. I would say it out loud. And everybody would look at me like, <laughs> oh, that's just stupid. <laughs> and it, they didn't say those exact words. They would just kind of look at me like, no, this way's better. And then literally a month later, somebody else said the exact same idea and everybody was like, <gasps> brava, brava. And so I'm sitting here like, is that not what I said? Did it, did it just, maybe I said it weird. Did I say it weird? I couldn't figure out what it was. And I, I just said, okay, you know what? That's fine. I'm, I'm just going to back out of all of the roles that I took on at this place. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. I'll just, I'll just go somewhere. Then I, you know, I left. And then when I went back, I was thinking, oh, it'll be different. You know, I'm, I'm a different person. They're different people. We've all matured and things like that. And I just felt like it, there was just this big stumbling block. Things that I thought I was talented in, it just seemed like I wasn't. It just, it, it would never, it would never fall into place. I would get these amazing opportunities and it would, there would be some big rejection. Here you go. Here's this amazing thing. Nope. You can't have it. I mean, you could have it, but not cooperating with that. And it just kept happening. And finally, I just said, you know what? I'm going to go do literally anything else. And I just left. Um, it wasn't until I surrounded myself with a totally different group of people and I felt like I could do things, but there was, there was a step forward 
But the next group of people thought that I was too young to be doing what I was doing. It was stupid. It was a battle. And I remember there were two or three people that really were just happy that I was there and that were really supportive and really wanted to support me. But after having been in that first environment and going into an environment where even one powerful person would talk down to you it, it's really it's really an issue so that being said I, I as I got older I was really selective about who was my friend and who wasn't and the reason one of the things is was I didn't even realize I was doing it I was doing that out of protection for myself people talk about it more when they talk about their relationships with like their romantic relationships And they're like, oh, I had this boyfriend that was really abusive, you know, emotionally abusive. And so when I moved on, I wanted to protect myself. But it happens with friendships, too. It happens with acquaintance. There are some times where you don't realize that what's happening is not healthy for you. You know, everybody else is fine. And just because everybody else is fine doesn't mean it's okay where you are. So that's, it's okay to leave those situations if you're able to. And if you're not able to, um, you need to make plans, figure out how to get out as soon as you can. There's no way you can grow in that situation. In the same way that you can't get well in the same location that made you sick, it's very similar for your spirit, for your body, for your mind, for your heart. Just all of the things that make up who you are. If something is causing you not to grow, you're not going to, you're not necessarily going to be able to grow in that location. Okay. Or in that situation, you're either going to have to leave that location or you're going to have to change that situation. And if you're not in charge of that situation, you have to leave. You're not a plant. You have like at the bottom of your feet are not roots. When somebody says stay grounded, they don't mean stay where you are. (laughs) That's not it. They mean, remember who you are But that doesn't mean remember who everyone around you is making you become. I have to plug my computer in because it says I have 55% left. And a second ago it said 80. So it's definitely something wrong with my computer. And I can't afford a new one. So this one that's gonna have to work. Stay with me, computer. I am excited to be around the friends that I am because they are super encouraging and I know that when I'm feeling down I can say guys (laughs) you know and bare my soul if I had to let us know when you need help and send funny gifts and memes or gifs I don't know gifs gifs call them gif gifs I don't care I cannot stay focused because I'm tired I was talking about being around the right people so the last thing I'm gonna say about being around the right people when you actually find the right people whether that be one person or seven people or 17 people or a community or a small family that you end up making up it doesn't have to be blood to be family when you find that those that group of people your life starts clearing up Okay, I can't say that your life becomes perfect. But when you start getting around the right people, you have the freedom to bounce ideas off of somebody else or talk to somebody else and do certain things that you weren't actually able to do before. There's, yeah, I probably could have started this opera company by myself having known nobody in the music community. I still have to establish my credibility. Um, and that's that's part of the reason why I'm, still taking voice lessons I don't think it's it's a good idea for me not to take voice lessons since I like to sing (laughs) but also because I want to be a part of this opera company um not just as you know a managing part of it but I actually would like to perform every once in a while and this is a way for me to do that but also offer it to other people also uh I think it's important for me to keep up my studies of business I actually have some books somewhere of course I have books <laughs> we'll talk about that later I still am a little guarded when I first meet people 
Um, I try to figure them out. I still try to be nice. And I know people are like, why are you so nice to somebody that like her? Like, or if they don't like the person, they're like, Aaron, why are you nice to her? And I just, I don't feel like not liking somebody is a reason to be mean to them. But that's, that's me. There's some people that, that are not at the level where they can talk to somebody that they don't like. And I think if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. And I, so I don't make people talk to someone they don't like. I don't even make myself talk to somebody I don't like, but if they walk too close to me, then I'm, I have to acknowledge that they exist. But that's just me. It doesn't have to be everybody. Thank you <laughs> for going through this journey with me today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I have six other videos that are available. And also, if you're interested in hearing about more about the opera company, um, Icolori de l'Opera has its own YouTube channel that will start uploading content to that very soon. And by soon, I mean not that soon because coronavirus. But please do subscribe. There will be a few videos posted shortly that you can enjoy maybe some tidbits and some vocal things that you can either try out or listen to or just our picks of things like that i need to go to sleep i post every saturday whoop, whoop, saturday i hope you have a beautiful weekend okay bye